In this video, we're gonna cover the API view class in Django REST framework, and you can extend this to create API views in your application. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the last function-based view that we have here in this project that we've been building in this series, and we're gonna replace that using the Django REST framework API view. Now let's go back to the documentation and let's start with an overview of the API view class. And this is a subclass of Django's view class. Now API views are different from the regular view classes in the following ways. So let's cover this just now. Requests that are passed to the handler methods will be the REST framework request instances. They're not going to be instances of Django's HTTP request. And importantly, the handler methods, they may return the REST framework response object instead of returning Django's HTTP response. And the view is going to manage the content negotiation and setting the correct renderer on the response. For example, if it's a browsable API or if it's a JSON formatted response, or if you have multi-part form data. And a couple of extra points, any API exception exceptions will be caught and they will be mediated into the appropriate responses. And finally, incoming requests will be authenticated and appropriate permission and throttle checks will be run before dispatching the request to the handler method. So we're gonna see an example that's gonna make it clearer what the API view is gonna do, but it's very similar to using the regular view class in Django. So the incoming request is gonna be dispatched to an appropriate handler method. So if it's a get request, then there's gonna be a get method on the view class. And also if it's a post request, we're gonna have a post method. Now, if we look at this example, this is a class called list users and it extends the API view. And this API view is coming from the rest framework.views module. So if we look at this, we can see we have some of these typical fields that are added to an API view, such as authentication classes, which we're gonna see very soon in this series. And we also have a permission class here of is admin user. And the API view has methods for each request that you want to allow to that API. For example, a get request. So we have a get method here. And one of the arguments to that is the request object. Remember that will be an instance of the REST framework request object. And you can return a REST framework response. So what we're going to do is we're going to import the API view into our project. And we're gonna use this to replace this function-based view with a class-based view. So let's go to the top of the module and we're going to import the API view from REST framework.views. And then we're gonna go down here and we're going to create a class-based alternative to what we have here. So I'm gonna create a class and the name of the function was product info. So let's call this class product info view. And just to keep it consistent, actually I'm gonna call this product info API view. And that's going to extend the API view that we've just imported from REST framework. Now, if we look at the function that we had here, we decorated it with API view and we passed the methods that we want to allow to that. And that was a get request. So what we're gonna do on the API view class is define a get method. And that's gonna take self and also the REST framework request object as arguments. And then we can essentially move a lot of this logic into this new method. So I'm gonna cut it out of there and we're gonna paste it in here and fix the indentation. And we can remove the function at the bottom. So now if we look at this view, it is the product info API view and it defines a get method for get requests and the logic in this method is what's gonna be actually performed when the get request comes to this view. So we fetch all of the products from the database and then we pass this data to the product info serializer. So we're passing all of the products as well as a count and the maximum price over all of those products. And then we return the serialized response using the REST framework response object. So now that we've added this new view class, what I'm gonna do is bring back the sidebar and we're going to go to urls.py and we're gonna find this product info view here. So it was this path and it was calling the function product info. We're gonna change that to the class-based view and again, we'll call as view here and that's gonna then pass that to our new class. And because we're gonna perform a get request, it's gonna hit this method called get and it's gonna execute this logic in the method. So let's test this out. We're gonna run the Django development server and we're gonna to go to the browser and we're gonna to go to this URL here. So it's localhost 8000 slash products slash info. Now we're on that page now and we can see the response that we've got here. We've got all of the products in the database and if we scroll to the bottom, you can see the two aggregated fields for the count and the max price. So this view is still working as it did before when we had a function based view but we've now extracted this into a class and we have a get method for the get request. And you can see the logic here in that method. This class is extending the API view from Django REST framework and that allows it to work natively with the request and response objects from REST framework. 
And again, the response object is performing that content negotiation. So by default, it's going to return the HTML format on the browser. But if we go to the URL here and we change this and add a format keyword argument or a format URL argument, we can set the format to JSON here and then it's going to return a raw JSON response. So that's all for this video. It's been a short video where we've introduced the API view in Django REST framework. And this view is a good one to extend if you have some custom logic that you want to perform on a get, a post, a put, or a delete request. And it's not necessarily linked closely to a particular model and query set like some of the other generic views that we've looked at so far. So if you have an endpoint that's collecting data from all sorts of different sources and collecting that and returning it to the client, then something like an API view might make more sense than using a generic view in that case. So that's all for this video. In the next video, we're going to move on to create, update and delete operations over the API using Django REST framework. And we're going to look at that using some of the generic views that are built into the package. And we're also going to look at JWT or JWT authentication. That's all coming up in the next set of videos. If you've enjoyed this one, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And if you want to support the channel, we have a coffee page linked in the description. Any donations are greatly appreciated. And if you think there's anything that we've missed over the content that we've covered so far, let me know in the comments. I'm happy to add more videos at the end. And we're going to cover lots more stuff throughout the duration of this series. Thanks again, and we'll see you in the next video.